بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to follows my dear respected brothers in Islam In Surah Al-Ankabut Right in the middle of Surah Al-Ankabut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says أتل ما أوحي إليك من الكتاب وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون. There are some beautiful hidden meanings within this ayah that يعني what I wanted to share with you إن شاء الله تعالى is some explanation of this ayah and Allah عز وجل began this ayah by two commandments he gives the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم and as an extension the entire ummah the first Commandment that we find in this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla says to him, "Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab." Recite what has been revealed to you from the book. Yeah, and you recite the Quran and read this Quran. That's the first commandment. The second one that comes straight after, "Wa aqim al-salah," and establish al-salah. Now let's understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala groups these two worships together. He puts them together: the recitation of the Quran and the establishment of the salat. And what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is teaching us. And you need to understand why did these two worships come together after each other? Yani Allah Azza wa did not say, Utlu ma uhiya alayka min al-kitab wa usum and fast and do hajj and give zakat. He specifically said, wa aqim salah What you learn from this is that one leads to another. Yani your recitation of the Quran, that's specific, and your dhikr in general, would lead to a salat that is established properly the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Your direct connection and relationship with the Quran would say how much your salat is going to improve before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One leads to another. In one hadith, he groups them as well to teach us the seriousness of both of them. For he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was would say say this uh, this uh, this hadith of his that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was on he was on a journey at night. He was taken by two angels in a dream on a journey. And he was taken until yani, he's seen several forms of punishments. Someone is being burned, someone is being cooked in a pot. Then at, at the end, he saw someone that was, yani, he was laying down and an angel would grab a boulder and he would throw it on his head. The hadith said, and his head would shatter into pieces, the flesh, the bones and the blood and so splattering everywhere. And the, the head would crack and, and shatter into many pieces. And then the head would come back. Allah Azza wa would bring back the bones and the skin and the flesh. It's all back. And then the angel would get that, that stone that has rolled away. He'll get it again and he'll smash it back on the same person's head. And this is a punishment that continues until the day of judgment. This is only the punishment of the grave. When the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked, who was that person I saw? Why was he punished the way he was punished? Who's that person? They said to him, The one that you saw his head shatter into many pieces. That that is a person who took by the Quran. يعني he used to believe the Quran, the Quran. He used to <coughs> understand that this Quran <coughs> is the source of his, of his happiness. It is the source of his success. Uh, he believed in the Quran. Yani he understood that this was the solution to all his problem in life. He knew what kind of uh, yani importance and significance he's supposed to give it in life. But what did he do? How did he treat it? Fayyarfudu. He used to abandon it. He used to neglect it. He did not have a relation, continuous relationship with it. And as a result, what happened? In the same hadith, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. He said, الْمَكْتُوبَةِ And he used to sleep during the obligatory salat. Yani that means if you sleep during the obligatory salat, man, he gave no concern to his salat. He did not care about his salat. So you see how one led to the other. His refusal and neglect and abundance of the Quran it basically led him to his abuse of the salat and his neglect of the salat as well. For Subhanallah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he groups them in the same hadith and they are grouped in the same punishment and that's his punishment before the hereafter, before Jahannam wa al Billah. For Nabi Sallallahu Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran, in the ayah, he says, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab and he follows it up by wa aqim al-salah. So what we learn from this is the same value 
and the same importance you give the Quran in your life, then you're supposed to give as salat the also the same importance. Or vice versa, yani, what kind of commitment and what kind of concern you have for the salat, you have to supposed to have the same commitment and concern for the Quran as well. You need to measure yourself. How do you see yourself with the salat? You find yourself that you're concerned and you're always on time uh, and يعني, uh, you perfect. Well, salat al fajr, I need to come on time. I put my alarm before and so on. If that kind of relationship you have with the salat, then you're supposed to have the same relationship with the Quran. Then they're both grouped with each other. Set your alarm then for the time that you're supposed to be reading the Quran. Have a schedule for how when to read the Quran during the day, during the night. But they're as important as each other. This is why they were grouped with each other. And we said one leads to a perfection of the other. The recitation of the Quran, it actually helps the person in, in perfecting and taking great concern and perfection in his salat. There was a man that came to Rasulullah and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, Inna shara'i al-Islam kathurat alayhi. فَأَوْصِنِي بِشَيْءٍ أَتَشَبَّثُ بِهِ He said, Ya Rasulullah, the, the legislations of Islam, the worship in Islam has become too much upon me. It's become difficult. فَأَوْصِنِي بِشَيْءٍ أَتَشَبَّثُ بِهِ So inform me and guide me and advise me of something I may hold on to tightly. شوف, أَتَشَبَّثُ بِهِ Give me something that I can hold on to. Now, who is Sahabi? What, is, what does he mean by his question? Yani he doesn't mean, Ya Rasulullah, the salat is too much. Please give me a concession. In where I can just pray two, three salat a day, where Ramadan is too much, give me some condition to, to break my fast a few days. He doesn't mean that. He means, Ya Rasulullah, the worship has become too much, it's a burden. Teach me something that if I was to do, it eases this burden and it makes me actually look forward to the worship and it makes it light upon me. For Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with no hesitation in the hadith, he says to him, he says to him, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله. He says that keep your tongue active and moist with the dhikr of Allah. Well, the Quran is the greatest dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani in other words, he taught him, if you're able to keep a continuous relationship with the Quran, you'll find the worship and above all, a salat very simple upon you. For subhanallah, what an incredible advice he gave him. And that's exactly what the Sahabi took. And he found his worship after that very easy for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about the munafiqeen, about the hypocrites in the Quran, and he described their salat, he said, That when they got up for salat, they get up, kusala, yani lazy. Lazy, you know, carrying their salat. You know why? Why does the munafiq get up careless in his salat, lazy for his salat? Why? At the end of the ayah, Allah says, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا يعني They only do a little dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A little dhikr of Allah. For you see how important your dhikr and your recitation of the Qur'an is for a better salat. When you find yourself lazy in a salat, Review your dhikr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Check how your dhikr and how your recitation of the Quran is. Yani on a minimum, the believer is supposed to be Adhkar al-Sabah wal masa the Adhkar after the five daily prayers, and the dhikr before he sleeps. And if you were to do this properly, it will take you from your time exactly 90 minutes, one and a half hours. This is this is a minimum for a believer to engage in. And above this is recitation of the Quran. Once you've got your dhikr right, your salat automatically would come right after that. This is why once again, utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab. What would that lead to? Wa aqim salat a perfect establishment of the salat. That's the first part of the ayah. Now in the second part of the ayah, when one has learned to perfect his relationship with the Quran, and he's taking his Quran seriously and he's hold, held on to that firmly, it's going to lead to a perfection to his salat. And now what is the result of that? Yani if someone has recited the Quran properly, alhamdulillah, his salat is correct and it's proper. What consequence does that bring upon? What natural result is it going to give him? The rest of the ayah is going to tell us this. Oh, there's something beautiful right at the end of this ayah. When we get there, I'll share it with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that's the first natural consequence of a correct salat. 
that was dependent on your correct relationship with the Quran. He said, Inna salat, verily a salat. Yani when you see the word Inna in the Quran, what is about to come after can never be doubted. It is, it is more certain than fact. He says, Inna salat, verily a salat. And what's meant here by the five daily prayers, Tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Tanha. Tanha is a present tense verb. In other words, it, continue, it, it alludes to continuity. It continuously prevents and forbids the person that prayed it from falling into al fahsha. Al fahsha here it comes from the word fuhsh. When fahsha, what it refers to is the major sins al zina, wal riba, wal al khamar, gossip, slander, backbiting. All of this is included in al fahsha because it's major sin and it also forbids him from al munkar. Well, munkar is that which the people detest and are disgusted by. Yani al munkar is the minor sins, and included within that is the major sins as well. When your salat is correct, you'll find yourself impossible that you fall in a major or minor sin ever again. This is a natural effect of a salat, nothing coming from you. This is what the power of the salat it will give you this. Ibn Abbas rahimahullah radiyallahu anhu, he said, Man lam tanhahu salatuhu anil fahshai wal munkar. He said that if person, if a person finds and recognizes and realizes that his salat is not forbidding him from the major sins and the minor sins, then he should review and check his relationship with, uh, yani with the salat and there's something going on. Then your salat, this is an effect of the salat, it's supposed to stop you from that. Yani when you find someone engaged in gossip and backbiting someone else, when they come and you say, Taqullah, this is haram. You cannot backbite this person. He's not here with us. And someone looks back at you and says, oh, what? when did you come all of a sudden? How come you've changed all of a sudden? For your answer is simple. Then I pray. Because I pray. Was salat, it forbids me from going into this kind of major sin. Very simple response. This is a natural effect of a salat. Inna salat tanha. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, akbar. This is the golden part of the ayah. To understand this is you've understood the entire ayah and what exactly a salat gives of a result. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, akbar. And you hear this at every, every khutbah, at the end of the khutbah. Meaning the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah is far greater. What is meant by dhikrullah? And what is it far greater than? What is meant by dhikrullah here is a salat. A salat is dhikrullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Musa alayhi salam, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Establish the salat for my remembrance. Yani if you want to remember me, then establish the salat. In other words, Allah azza wa jal, he, he called a salat a dhikr. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Meaning the dhikr of Allah included in that is your salat akbar, far greater. Greater than what? Al ulama rahimahumullah, they said, of this beautiful meaning. They said that the salat's results are far greater than it only preventing you and forbidding you from falling into the major and minor sins. <laughs> However, this is just a small effect of salat that it stops you from entering and committing the major and minor sins. Otherwise, the real effect of Salat, Akbar, it's way greater than that. A Salat is the source of your happiness. A Salat is the source of your success. A Salat is a source of cure by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Salat, if it was accepted from you, all your other deeds are accepted. And as a result, a person is admitted into the paradise. You see, wala dhikrullahi akbar, and the greatest result of Salat, yani huwa, it's not just that it prevents you from al fahsha wal munkar its result far greater, its reward is far greater. And the greatest of results that a salat will give a person in this life is that it'll give them as an ummah victory in Islam. It'll give them, it is the source of their victory of salat. This is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he spoke about Isa Alayhi Salam coming down, when he spoke about Isa Alayhi Salam coming down and killing a Dajjal, he did not just say that Isa Alayhi Salam comes down and he kills a Dajjal. He said something before that. He says he comes down and he goes to Baytul <coughs> Maqdis and he prays behind the believers, Salat al-Fajr, and then they go and they kill at tajjal 
Why was that piece of information mentioned? The hadith could have went away without mentioning that he prays Salat al-Fajr. But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to teach us that before their victory against the Dajjal, the greatest of enemies that the believers will ever meet, before their victory with him, what were they doing? They were praying Salat al-Fajr in jama'ah. And so now they were in deserving yani al-Nasr and deserving the, the victory. For so you see how wala dhikrullahi akbar as-salat, they prayed as-salat far greater than it only forbidding you from the evil and the major and the minor sins. It actually led to their victory at the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he speaks about the victory that he gave the believers on the day of Yawmul Fatah, when they conquered Mecca, he said, inna fatahna laka fatham mubina describing the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the situation. This is eight years after the Hijrah. Now finally they have conquered Mecca. They've entered Mecca. They've destroyed the idols and they've got their hands once again on it. What was the reason for that victory that Allah Azza wa Jal gave them? The end of Surah Al-Fatih. The beginning gave us the result. Inna fatahna laka fatha mubil. The end of Surah Al-Fatih gave the reason. What was the reason for their victory? Believe it or not, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, that you see the state of the Sahaba, Tarahum, a present tense, yani continuity. Yani you continuously see them, and their state is what? Rukkaan sujada, yani in salat. So the beginning of the ayah was that we gave them victory and opened up Mecca for them. And the reason came at the end of the surah that they were continuously in salat. That was the consequence and that was the natural effect of the salat. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he himself was in Mecca and he was being exiled and kicked out by his people, very terrible situation he was in Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra. He says, وَإِن, وَإِن that the disbelievers, they plotted and they planned and they wanted to kick you out of the city, exile. Alright, what's the solution? And Nabi Sallallahu now is struggling in Mecca. They're about to kick him out. Uh, there's nothing on his support from his side. What is he going to do? What is the wahi and the commandment that Allah is going to give him? That is going to prepare him for victory later on? Allah says straight after it, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا He said to him, establish the salat when the sun sinks, يعني صلاة المغرب, وَإِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ صلاة العشاء وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ which is salat al-fajr. And then he said, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ دَافِلَةً لَكْ And some hours of the night, get up and pray. Then when you pray, you've gathered between the two. When you pray, but you're reciting the Quran and you're praying, you're doing the two in one time. Subhanallah, as a result, in those ayat, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said to him, أَقِمِ الصلاة وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ عَسَى أَيَّبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَحْقَامًا مَحْمُدًا وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِ Which is a dua to make. What's the result of all of this? He said to him, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ Say that Al-Haqq, يعني Al-Nasr, the victory has finally arrived. وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ And the falsehood, يعني had, had actually left. فَيَعْنِي سُبْحَانَ الله, You find in the Qur'an, wherever you look, always victory that was given in the Qur'an, the reason for it was always Salat. Not only for this Ummah, but even, even before that. Musa, alayhi salam, before Allah Azza wa Jal commanded him to take Bani Israel to the Red Sea and strike the ocean with his staff and then as a result find the access way to escape. Before that by 40 years Ibn Kathir rahimahullah he says Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a commandment that Allah mentioned in the Quran. He said to him, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ وَأَخِيهِ أَن تَبَوَّأَ لِقَوْمِكُمَا بِمِصْرَ بُيُوتَىٰ وَاشْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبْلَىٰ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ then وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal commands Musa alayhi salam to go, him and his brother, and tell Bani Israel, make from your houses a qibla, prepare your houses as a qibla. Yani Bani Israel, it's very difficult for them to pray outside. Fir'aun won't allow that. They cannot pray in congregation, but that's not an excuse. He said, make your houses a qibla, make it a masjid. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ and establish the salah. And what after that? وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ خلاص. There's nothing to say after that except congratulate the believers. And then he says to him, فَاسْتَقِيمَا يعني Hold on to this commandment properly. Our nasr and victory is going to come, which is one of the greatest consequences of salat. 
40 years after, you can imagine 40 years, yani some people died, some people lived, but khalas, they were on their way, Allah was preparing them to victory through their salat, 40 years after, now take Bani Israel to the sea, split that sea, and off you go to the other side, and Fir'aun was drowned, him and his army. Where did all that come from? It began with Aqim al-Salah wa Bashir al-Mu'mineen, subhanAllah. For this was always the natural consequence of Salah. Well, this is why the end of the ayah, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the final part of the ayah, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَصْنَعُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows really well what you're up to and what you do. يَعْلَمُ here also is a present tense which implies continuity. In other words, he continuously knows that which you and I are doing. مَا تَصْنَعُونَ يعني He knows that excuse that you've given yourself for, for, for the Qur'an itself and reading the Qur'an. He knows the excuse that you make when you say, يعني اليوم, I cannot go to the masjid or salli my uh, uh, يعني congregate. I cannot pray the prayer in congregation. Allah, we a'lamu مَا تَصْنَعُونَ He knows what's behind that intention, whether it's serious and it's valid or whether it's just a shaytan giving you excuses and you've held on to those excuses. Allah, we a'lamu مَا تَصْنَعُونَ فَيَعْلِي سُبْحَانَ الله, An incredible ayah that taught us what kind of relationship we're supposed to have with the Qur'an or with the Salat. The same concern, my brothers in Islam, that you give your Salat, you're supposed to give the Qur'an. And understand that the more Qur'an you recite, the more dhikr you are engaged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more it makes the worship easier. فَيَعْلِي Hold on to that, especially when we said, أَذْكَارُ sabah the morning supplication, the afternoon supplication, the one before the sleep, and the five, يعني, the supplications before, after the salawat, the five daily prayers, subhanAllah, you'll find an enormous, a dramatic, يعني, a drastic effect, and a change to your salat, bi-ithnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our recitation of the Quran, and to accept our salat, and to make it easy for us to continuously remember him during the day and during the night uh, via reading the Quran with dhikr that is open during the day and during the night. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the Quran, people who benefit from the reminders of the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Innahu wa liyu thalika wa qadiru alayhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.